week after this is my valuable life where we are looking at the three values of the church worship grow and serve and trying to figure out what they mean how God wants us to learn about them and what it means to us as individuals and what it means to us as a body and so this is week three and we are looking at this value of grow but before we do I felt I needed to put down on words these things I want us to make sure we get, right? I mean, these first three slides, if you don't remember anything else over the next four weeks, that you're going to remember these things. Okay, and the first one you know, right? I'm valuable to God. Say it. Say it. Yes, we need to get that. Right, a lot of times we don't live like that. We don't live like God values us. We don't live like we are worthy, right? Now, maybe sometimes our actions and our attitudes don't reflect godly behavior but we are always valuable to god okay even when my actions may not look like i love god i'm still valuable to god and so we should never forget this okay and then when we look around us here and we look outside and look at other people the first thing that comes should come to our mind isn't like oh it should be they are valuable to god If we would look at people like that and say, that's a person who God loves, maybe we would engage differently. And so we want to look at ourselves this way as well as others. The second thing I want us to get is these three words, worship, grow, serve, they should be coming as a response to God. Right? We grew up in a, in a culture, and in church culture too, where we talk about doing. I need to do more. I need to do this. I need to do that. And, and our worship is a response to God. But also, is this, as we define grow, growing is a response to God, right? I desire to know Jesus more, and I desire to know those in the body because of God. Because I know my value in Him, and because He loves people. And so I want to know the people He loves, right? And so growing is a response to God as well. And so we want to get, change our mindset to say it's not about doing, it's about responding. It's about being who God has created me to be, and I will go as God leads me to go. And then finally, I want to make sure we get this, that God doesn't want something from us. He wants us. Okay, as we go through this, if we can only remember that I'm valuable to God, I'm responding to God, and God wants me, not everything I can give him or what I can do for him, but he wants me, man, then we're in good shape, right? Then we're prepared to go out and tackle whatever God has for us to tackle because I know my value before him. I know that I'm just chasing and following him wherever he's going to lead me and that I know he desires me, not my output right he wants us so i want us to get that and embrace that as we continue over the next two weeks and then to remember it as we live our life okay so grow today is i'm going to show you the value here in a minute it's going to be maybe a little more practical okay so i think a lot of times maybe we don't quite grasp the significance of what it should be like when we're together right and so maybe we need just to hear some practical things about that but we want to look at this biblically as well so here's the value if you looked on our website that we put to grow the words the christian life is meant to be lived and shared with others because we look at grow here as being in community together okay being in healthy community allows us to develop deep bonds with one another and to grow closer to Jesus. Our small groups or community groups allow people to study together, serve together, pray together, enjoy life together, and I guess we're allowed to have fun, right? Yes. Now I want you to go up to the last word of the second line and the first word of the third line. What are they? Healthy community. Significant part of what this says because there's a whole lot of unhealthy community, right? There's a whole lot of unhealthy community unhealthiness and people getting together and so we want to make sure we're talking about healthy community because we've all been a part of community that wasn't so healthy right but healthy community is so significant in the passage we're going to look at we're going to look at a couple but the one in acts is talking about healthy community right the outside world a lot of times looks at the body of christ as maybe a group of people that doesn't really like each other doesn't really get along seems to always be in conflict and maybe they're saying why would i go be a part of that when it doesn't seem so healthy, okay? And so we want to make sure we're fostering healthy community. All right, so let's take a look at some passages here. Very intriguing passage. Look forward to the day I get to teach Genesis. Love Genesis. We're in chapter 2 of Genesis here, the second creation story, so to speak, and, and Adam, or man, is sitting there. God has tasked him with naming the animals. And so God is bringing the animals before Adam, and he has seen 
two animals, one of like kinds, right? He sees two horses, he sees two bears, he sees a, two snakes, he sees whatever, right? They're all coming before him. And Adam, the man, is naming them all. And then we get to this spot where Adam must be recognizing, hey, everybody has a like kind but me. Maybe not. We don't, the scripture doesn't say that, but you, you feel the tension in the story right now. How amazing it must have, must have been for him to be one-on-one -on -one with God, right? How beautiful that would be. But God then says, as God looks at the situation, he says it's not good for Adam or man to be alone. So God says, I need to do something. Now, depending on the translation that you look at, right, the ESV, I, I think, says, need to find a helper that's fit for him. But the Hebrew there is a like kind, right? God says, it's not good for man to be by himself. He needs someone like him. He needs a like kind. And so God, in the midst of creation, says, everybody needs a like kind. So that's our first indication that, that, yes, my relationship with God is significant, but God says like kinds are important for us as well. In Mark, this gospel we went over a couple of years ago, two years ago, I guess, love this, right? Mark wants to get right to the story, and he's, he's saying in chapter 3, Jesus has got 12 disciples, and he's talking about their purpose. And in the middle of that purpose, Mark tells us about Jesus so that they might be with him. Right? It's, it should blow our mind a little bit because it's not just Jesus saying, hey, I need to teach you guys because I've come, I'm going to die for you, right? But no, saying Jesus needs community too. That these disciples need, are here and he's gathering them so they're with him as well. Even the Son of God, the Son of Man comes and he needs community. And so we see that, that this group that Jesus calls up. And then in John 17, the most beautiful prayer, right? This prayer that John records of Jesus Jesus prays about the body that they may be one. That this group of people who say yes to Jesus as Messiah, that they would be one, intertwined in Him, unified together in Him. His prayer before He's ready to go to the cross says, I pray that they would be essentially intertwined that you and I are tied together because of a commonality that we have, and his name is Jesus. And so we essentially have ropes between us all, right, as we are one in Christ, and Jesus prays that we would be this way. So we see it at creation. We see it as Jesus starts his ministry, the community that he needs and the disciples need. We see it as Jesus is preparing to leave earth. And then we see it in this passage. So if you have your Bible, turn here. If you have a phone, turn here, wherever you want to look at it. We see it here. Now, we've studied this passage, actually, last January as well. Acts 2, 42 through 47, a summary passage in Acts. Luke loves summary passages. We looked at all the summary passages and talked through it. And so we, we, we want to understand this, right? I mean, some scholars would say Luke's got some propaganda going on here, right? That, that he's painting this beautiful picture of the body of Christ. And, and we know that this is a beautiful picture of how we should be, but we seem to go our ways and want our own thing, right, and dive off into conflict at times, right, maybe unhealthy community. But this lays out a perfect picture of all that we've just talked about in those other three verses. So let's take a look at this passage, the end of Acts. The first summary passage and the most descriptive of all of the summary passages in Acts. And Luke is letting us know what they did. And so he says this. He says, and they devoted themselves devoted, persevered, similar thing, right? That, that they're all in, essentially. Okay, so the, the body of Christ, whoever in this early church has said Jesus is Messiah, they're all in. And what are they devoted to? The apostles' teaching. So the first thing they're devoted to, or they want, they desire, is they want to learn. Okay, they want to learn about this Messiah that they are now following. Okay, and so the first thing they're devoted to is learning, they're devoted to the fellowship. And the Greek word here is koinonia, right? Which is essentially sharing life together. So they're devoted to sharing life. They're devoted to being together. They're devoted to breaking of bread. This could be, this could be the Lord's Supper. It could be a meal in a home, right? It could be a combination. But again, they're, devo they're devoted to being together. And finally, they're devoted to what? Praying. 
They're devoted to praying. And so we see four things Luke wants us to know about this early church. They want to learn, want to know what it looks like to live as Jesus lived. They're devoted to sharing life. And that, that's a significant thing, right? When you're a minority group of Jewish people with other Jews who think you're crazy. So sharing life is very significant. They're devoted to getting together to break bread, whatever that could mean, a couple things it could mean, right? And they're devoted for praying for each other. And then verse 43, Luke tells us, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs, essentially miracles, are being done through the apostles. 44, And all who believed, meaning those who say yes, that Jesus is Messiah, were together, and look what it says, they had all things in common. Essentially, this community of, small community of new Jesus followers are saying he's Messiah, saying, look, we're going to, everything that I have is yours, everything that's yours is his, everything that's his is hers, right? They're saying they have things in common. Not that they don't have private property, he's not suggesting that, right? But verse 45 clears it up, and they were selling their possessions, belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as need arose. So what it's suggesting is, yeah, I have, I have some stuff, and I take care of my stuff, and I value my stuff, I like my stuff. But man, if, if Kim has a need, you know what? Kim can have some of my stuff. Or I'll sell some of my stuff so Kim can have what she needs. Right? That's the idea, is, is no one's going to go without their needs being met within the body. Now, I know some of us have wants that are pretty extravagant. It doesn't mean that. Okay? It's about meeting basic needs and saying... The body was there for one another, and everybody's basic needs were taken care of because they were willing to share amongst themselves, and they looked at all that they had, however God wanted to use it, for the sake of the community, okay? We want to make sure we hear that. It's so significant. And day by day, 46 says, attending temple together, so they're going to worship daily, and breaking bread in their homes, and they're meeting in their homes daily, it appears, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. They're thankful for what they've got. They're thankful for what they're receiving. And 47 says they're praising God and having favor. I love this part. Favor with all the people. Not just people within the body. It's this idea that the people outside looking in are saying, there's something different about these folks. There's something different about them. Look at how they care for each other. Look at how they share with each other. Look what's happening. There's something different about these people. And the outside looking in are saying, well, you know, they're finding favor with people. Now, we're, we know that this doesn't happen for very long, right? I mean, the persecution begins pretty quickly. But Luke's trying to tell us something here, that as the body lives, as God designed the body to be, People look at it and are intrigued by how they share life. And then he says, the Lord adds. The Lord adds. And I've always been challenged by this, and I think we talked about this a little bit last year, right? Right, as we, we talk so much, I gotta go tell people about Jesus, I gotta go tell people about Jesus, and there's nothing wrong with that, but are we healthy enough to even want to invite someone in? Right? And as we think about that, as we tell someone about Jesus, are we just gonna leave them on the island about alone? The point is, is right, as we're telling people about Jesus, we're bringing them into the community. We're bringing them into a healthy space so that they can experience healthy community. And so I love this fact that God adds, right? As, as we create healthy spaces, as we create safe spaces, as we create community that, that we all want to be a part of, guess what? God will add to it because it's a safe place for people who are broken and hurt and are looking and searching to be added to. Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? And so this is the picture, right? God says, man shouldn't be alone. He needs like kinds, okay? We're like kinds, right? This is great that we got like kinds here. Are we prepared to share life together? However God would want that to be. And so I want to look at a couple examples in Scripture. Now these examples really deal with one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I think, and I like them because it, it kind of hints at, and they're all a little uniquely different, it kind of hints at what's needed in healthy community. Okay, it kind of hints at how healthy community looks to others. Okay, and so I want to look at this. And so our, our examples here first, we know this, Jesus and the disciples. 
right? This group of men that Jesus raised up. Jesus, we, we kind of get the sense here that he has an inner circle of three, right? So he even has some that he's closer to. But, but their job is to be like him and follow him and to grow with him. And they're sharing life. And, and Jesus just isn't teaching through word of mouth, right? They're always engaging, loving, and serving, and being present, and being sent out, and coming back, right? And we see this amazing love, this amazing connection that occurs when this group of people spend three years together intimately, Right? Amazing things occur. And so we see Jesus model it. We see Jesus model community. We see the disciples struggle with what it is. But because of this three years of modeling, these 11 plus those that were on the fringes changed the world. Right? Because of the modeling, because of the intimacy, because of the community, because they bought in completely to who Jesus was and is, they changed the world. They understood it. But let's look at some other examples. You know this one, don't you? This is where we were last year for the last part of the year, and Ruth and Naomi, amazing, right? Ruth says, this, this Moabite says to this Israelite, I'm all in with you. I'm leaving everything behind to go with you. I have no idea what's going to happen to us, you, us, both widows, when we get back there, because we know you Israelites don't like us Moabites, but I'm all in. Man, does God use that, doesn't he? Amazing blessing occurs because these two women love and support each other. Ruth gets married, Naomi gets her grandson. Amazing story of devotion to one another. How about David and Jonathan? These two guys, man, the friendship, right? The friendship they had, this, it's built on loyalty and love. Right? I think a lot of times as guys, we're, we don't like the mushiness, but there's some mushiness between David and Jonathan. These guys love each other. These guys are warriors too, by the way. But right, they're so connected. They're not afraid or ashamed to share their love and devotion to one another. What an amazing connection, the trust and loyalty that exists and, and, and the willingness to share it between these two warriors. Amazing relationship these guys have. Barnabas and Paul. I don't think we think about Barnabas this way and Paul this way, but Barnabas means encourager, right? He's the guy that gives Paul credibility. He's the guy that recognizes something in Paul and takes Paul before the Jerusalem church and says, this is a good dude. Oh, that's amazing, right? He's the guy, essentially, that, that jumpstarts Paul's ministry. He sees something in Paul. He's willing to spend time with Paul and says, hey, I, I, you're, you know, I know you used to kill us Christians, right? We would look at someone like Paul and say, I don't think so, right? I mean, today we'd look at someone who, who is, has a lifestyle such as Paul did prior to meeting Jesus and say, really, could Jesus really change him that much? But Barnabas sees something, and he takes him before the Jerusalem church, and he says, this guy, this guy. And sure, they, they go off and travel their first missionary journey together. Well, then they have a disagreement and go their separate ways, but still, God used them. God used Barnabas to bring Paul along. And then finally, Paul and Timothy, more like a father-son relationship, true mentoring relationship here, right? Paul totally pouring in to Timothy, raising up the next Paul, so to speak. So different types of relationships, different types of connections, but all significant to having healthy community and all modeling it. Now, we know in all of these relationships, right, there's issues. Issues arise. There's struggles. That occurs within healthy community, right? Stuff happens. But as Jesus taught the disciples, right, we forgive, we love, we move on, okay? And so I want to look at some practical things this morning. Three things. I was trying to boil this down as we talked this week through what we should, what we should say and really just trying to get at how do you have healthy community, how do you create an environment where people feel safe? How do you create an environment where people can be transparent? How do you create an environment where there's vulnerability? Now, I've been in leading facilitating groups for over 20 years, and I've seen it. I don't want to say seen it all because I've never seen it all, but I've seen a lot, right? I've been a part of groups that I couldn't wait till they ended, and I was leading them, and I could have ended them. I've been a part... Of, of groups where the, the depth was so amazing that I grew so much because of my connections to other people and how they challenged me and loved me and walked with me and lifted me up and encouraged me, right? Amazing. 
And so we want to talk through. And so I, I try to break this down really simple. Now, all three of these words I'm going to give to you, I think really all are interplay and they, they work together and they're all there together. But just again, trying to make this really, really simple of what has to occur. So let's look at the first word, respect. And I think about this in a, in a lot of different ways, but you have to respect people, right? If I'm going to trust someone, if I'm going to build trust with someone, really before I can even take that step, I have to know that they respect me. I have to know that, and respect says they care about me, right? That, that, that I'm allowed to be me, right? I'm allowed to be my messy self. I'm allowed to be my non-messy, but I'm allowed to be me. And people respect me for me, right? They're not coming in and saying, well, I can't have community with you until I change you. Right? Here's how you need to change before we can even engage. Right? But respect says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be accepting of people. And then how I see this play out in groups and, and, and is you know, someone will, will share something and, and someone jumps right in. You know, someone shares story Y, someone jumps in and shares their story Y, X, and Z, how their story's better than that one. There's no respect in that. Right? There's no respect in receiving someone else's story. Or how someone might be talking and, and I just interrupt and start talking over. There's no respect in that. Or when someone says something or people are talking through things and, and someone speaks up and essentially invalidates what everybody else said because they're the only one that's right. They're the only one that really knows. They're the only one that has the right theological perspective or the li right life perspective. And so they've just invalidated everybody else. Or the one where you're in a group and this guy, guy or gal sits off to the side and they never speak. After six, eight, ten weeks, they finally feel safe, and they finally share, and you have that guy, can I say the word idiot in church? Because it's the idiot that I want to smack, that says, oh look, Bob's finally talking. Right, that's, a, not a, that's disrespect on all levels. Now we would think, like, I know we're sitting there like, well, I would never do that, but it occurs in groups, right? Because we all want to get out what we want to say, or we all want to make ourselves feel better at times. But if I'm going to build healthy community, we've got to respect each other. We've got to be willing to receive each other exactly how we are. We've got to be willing to allow people to say what they need to say and be okay with it. Secondly, and I can't have respect if I'm not humble, I've got to walk into any situation with humility. Right? I've got to, suggest, I've got to say, essentially, everybody here is equal. We're all on equal planes. I don't know how many groups I've been in where I've had guys that didn't believe men and women were equal. Oh, that was fun, right? The things that would be said because of it and the correction that would try to occur, right, is, no, we're not equal, I'm better than. Or the groups you're in where someone is, has a title, and because I have this title, whatever that title is, right, I'm elevated. And so I'm a little better than you because God's put me at this title, or this position, or this amount of money, or this demographic, or this social standing, right? There's no humility in that. The body of Christ, we're all saved by the same Jesus. Amen. All saved by the same Jesus. Not because of us, by the way, but because of Him. We need humility. And by the way, this is in groups of 12. This is in groups of one-on-one, -on -one, right? I need to respect the person. I need to be humble in it. And then finally, and I think this is huge, is I need to listen. There's something we all could get better at, is listening. Right? Normally how we, we listen is, is, is someone might be saying, saying something, right? They begin their first sentence, and I've stopped listening because I'm working on my response. Whether that's one-on-one -on -one or in a group, right? It, or I don't even start to listen to them because I'm already formulating my response. And we don't sit and just hear. We don't listen to understand. We listen to respond. Right? We should be listening to understand what people are speaking to us instead of listening to try to tell them what we think or how they should change or our own view, our own opinion. I think as we are working to build healthy community, we want to be tremendous listeners. You know the adage, right? I have two ears, one mouth. I should listen twice as much as I talk kind of deal. Because we want to be listeners who hear to understand and when someone shares something right you get to that spot in your group where vulnerability is being built right where safety people are starting to feel safe right starting to feel safe and that that person shares right 
Don't be the guy that's got to fix them. Don't be the guy that's got to give the response. Don't be the guy that's got to say, oh, wait till you hear my story. Don't be the guy, right? What we need to do is just learn to sit with people, keep our mouths closed, and be in moments. And let God decide how to move it forward. I think a lot of times when I work with, with couples, one of the things that most couples struggle with is communication, right, where none of us are perfect at it. And, and so we, we go through this exercise which is called active listening. And active listening is essentially someone is sitting, I'm the listener, I listen to what the person tells me, and then I essentially repeat back to them what they've said to me as I've understood it. And what that allows to happen, right, is it allows me to understand what someone is trying to tell me. And most of the time, what's repeated back isn't what the person said because we listen with filters, We listen with how we want to hear. And so to get to a spot where we can listen to what's actually being said takes practice. It takes training. It takes a willingness to say, I just want to hear what this person is saying to me. And then receive it. And respond as God would lead me to respond. I believe that as we respect each other, as we're humble with each other before God, and as we become exceptional listeners, we can create a vulnerable, transparent, trustworthy, safe environment, a community of people where people want to be a part of it, where people are like, look at these folks. Look at how they love and serve and care. Look at how they receive each other exactly as they are. Not trying to change each other. They're just trying to be present in each other's moments is God does his thing with each of us. In which, by the way, God is doing his thing with each of us. And God is trying to do something with each of us together. And so, though, and I know some of you might be thinking, look, I've known people in this church for my whole life. I want to say to you that you can never stop growing in community together. Right? I hadn't, I hadn't my wife and I have been around together a long time. I say that excitedly, right? <laughs> but I'll never stop learning about her. I'll never stop growing. They'll never reach a spot where I'm like, done, don't need to talk anymore ever again. Don't need to communicate anymore ever again, right? It never stops. So regardless of how long I've known someone, right, we can still go deeper and deeper and get more and more connected as God leads us. So I want to encourage us in that, is keep pursuing Jesus as he pursues you, but pursue one another. I want to say this, too. If it were my option, my choice, right? Tim Evans' choice, well, one, Tim wouldn't be standing in front of everybody week in and week out, but from a group standpoint, right, I would be in a group of one or two or three, right? I work best, I'm an introverted guy, I work best one-on-one. That's, those are my best relationships, one-on-one. You add another person in there, I start to get a little more like, uh, now you add 10 in there, and, I, and then I'm like, okay, I gotta be the pastor here because otherwise I'm gonna freak out, right? So some of us prefer the small group, great. So you don't like the larger group. You just don't feel comfortable. Get connected with some person. Start building a relationship with someone. Others of us love the big group, right? Go get connected to a big group, however that looks for you. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. The point being is God desires us to be connected with other believers. right? I can't just, right? We we know those folks. We all know this guy that says, I can watch on the TV, and that's all. I I don't need anybody. Wrong. The body of Christ is designed to be the body, right? The finger can't just flop around and be the finger all by himself, right? He needs others to be connected to so the body can be the body. So we need one another, all right? We get it? Yes. So I'm going to, so we have some groups that we all can be connected to, okay? And so I'm going to show you four pictures of these groups that you can be connected to. Some are ongoing, two are going to be starting soon. And I'm not suggesting, hey, you've got to do it if you don't sign up, loser, no, not suggesting that. Here's opportunity where you might say, hey, I think I might want to get connected here. Or you might say, hey, definitely not for me. Whatever. But it's still no excuse not to try to be connected with other people. We heard that enough? Say yes. Yes, we've heard enough. Okay. So Kim Machowski, Kim's amazing. Kim runs this group all year long. She's just like this all the time. This group is going on. Okay. They meet here during the week on Wednesdays at noon. They have lunch together. And then they study. They're studying judges right now that'll go through March. And then when summertime comes, they still get together for lunch once a month. And so it's only ladies that attend, but it's open to anybody could go, right? 
Anybody could go. No, guys, you'd be welcomed. You might be set off to the corner, but you'd be welcome. <laughs> okay, and so there's a group that's ongoing, Wednesdays at noon. Men's group, Chuck facilitates that. This is taking a different turn. We're essentially, and if you read the card, we'll put cards out there soon, you read the card, it's like, we don't know what's going to happen once a month. But something's going to happen. We're going to get together. I think went to an escape room a couple months ago, built something, had some pizza the other last week, right? So you never know what's going to happen, but a great place for men to get together and just, just be together and, and doing something together, okay? And so if you don't get an email about this monthly, please let me know so we can make sure you get on the email list. Two new groups starting up. Gene, everybody loved Gene so much when he taught Romans in the fall. So Gene's going to facilitate another group starting the first Sunday in March. I'm going through using LifeWay's material, okay? And so if you're interested and you love Gene and Ty so much, it's going to be available. And we're going to do this after church. Okay, so we feel like in the winter, why don't we just, we're already here, why don't we just stay here, meet for an hour after, and in the summertime we'll do some other things. Okay, so Gene's going to have one, and then the Mosiers are going to facilitate a group that will start in February that will discuss the sermon series, the next one, which we'll announce next week. And so this will start February 9th, 19th, okay? So a couple of, op four options to get connected with other people that we're throwing out there. Now, again, if you're, saying, if you're sitting there saying, you know what, Tim, I really, one-on-one, -on -one. speak up, let us know. Maybe there's other people are saying, you know what, I'd rather something a little smaller, right? Let us know that. How do we know if we don't know, right? You've got to tell us these things. If you're looking for something different or something smaller, and we'll see what God has for us, okay? So ways to get connected after church on Wednesdays or whenever and wherever Chuck decides we should go do something as guys, okay? So that's the idea. Now, I want to end with this quote. Not, at first, I liked the quote, and then I didn't like the quote, and then I thought more about it, and I felt like it really did encompass Acts. So you may, you, you know, again, you don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. But Francis Schaeffer says this. He says, Our relationship with each other is the criterion the world uses to judge whether our message is truthful. Christian community is the final apologetic. Now, I've wrestled with this a little bit. But as I think of Acts, right, you think about that Acts passage, it says they found favor and God added. They found favor because of how they lived, because of how they loved, because of how they cared, because of how they shared. People looked at them and said, there's something different. There's something unique. I love this. This is how we should be. Because of how we love each other, because of how we care for each other, because of how we serve each other, the world should say, can, can I be a part of this with you? Right? I don't even know Jesus, but I want to be a part of this because this looks really good. I don't even know why you're like this. I don't even know why you do it, but can I be a part of it? And God says, yeah, let's, let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. Let's bring them in. So Lori's going to come and play. We're not going to sing to end. We're just going to sing and we're just going to sit and be quiet. But here's what I want you to ask God. Is God, who do you want me to be connected with? How do you want me to be connected? God, how do I need to be more humble? God, do I need to be a better listener? God, how do I need to bring a healthy environment to the people I'm involved with? Just sit and hear the Spirit talk to you this morning just for one or two minutes. As, as Lori plays. us what love is 
for loving us unconditionally. For letting us know how valuable and worthy we really are. And modeling the fact that we need to be together. You didn't come so we could be individual silos all by ourselves. You came so that we all could know you personally, but that we would live it out together. And I pray for us. I pray for First Baptist Ypsilanti, that we would live it out together. Whatever that looks like for each of us, however that manifests itself and however we might be attached, but that we would desire each other. We would desire to know each other to live with each other, to share with each other, to encourage one another, to love one another, whatever, however you might lead us in that, God. So thank you for the community that already exists. Thank you for the community that's going to get created. Thank you for the community that's going to be enhanced. Just thank you for how you continue to teach us and grow us and love us. So God, as we go our way today, I pray for safety as we walk to our vehicles. Pray for safety as we drive home. Pray that your hand would be over all of us today. We love you. We praise you. And we look forward to the community we're going to have this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Be safe going home and walking to the car and all those sorts of things.